people. They can tell you when they are counseling somebody, you, you hear them speak. Ask them, you can attack someone who just got done again to them, and they will train the person and you become a wonder in the spirit. But they themselves will never rise beyond that level. But they understand the spiritual principles. You can send them on evangelism, they will bring back souls. They can do great motions, but to live and get personal success in their lives as a result of the word of God, they will never do it. That's why Paul said, let it not be that after I have preached, I myself will be a castaway. That means it is possible. There are many men of God who are victims of the things they teach. They stand on stage and attack immorality as if they don't know who a lady is. But you search their lives and see. Every hotel already knows them. Doers of the world. There are many preachers who teach on tithing and giving. They themselves don't give. The reason why they are still rich is because people are sowing into their lives. So they don't know the difference. They don't live by the word of God. Many people say, okay, speak the word and pray. But the leaders themselves don't pray. Hallelujah. You go to a man of God's house, you see him cross his leg and he's watching football match. He gives you the timetable. And see, have you not known that the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs? You see why certain people do not have personal success in their lives? Because the truth is, they have not come to a point where they love God genuinely. And are willing to live by his principles. There are men of God who declare fasting and prayer. And while the people are fasting, they are eating stockfish. Nobody knows. You just see them come. You see, we can fake every kind of thing on stage. But can I tell you something? Just as light and darkness cannot be mistaken, one day it will show whether you are standing in God's word or not. Hallelujah. Every time I pick up my Bible, I tell the Lord, am I studying simply because of the responsibility of ministry? Is it because I must prepare a message for God's people? Or is it because people will come for counseling? Hallelujah. Then you see people come and they stand to cast out devils and embarrass themselves. Yeah, that's where the robber will hit the road. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ and they go back with untold predicaments as a result of daring hell with a hypocritical spirit. It's easy to stand before people. I take authority over this devil. And then the man cannot sleep in the night in his house. He will call somebody and say, can you just come and stroll around? Because even he is not convinced that the name of Jesus works. It just so happened that he was used and the demon left. i never forget in secondary school when we prayed for one interesting boy that used to sleep on top of my bunk. And the devils came out. Oh, you, 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 come, you need to come and see us. When evening came, Bible said, and when evening came, that was when Jesus was healing. But when evening came for us, that was when it became a serious concern. People started singing praise and worship, strolling out of their rooms, moving to the, and they took light. I didn't sleep there. You watch people teach about certain kingdom principles. And when you see them, you say, my God, look at the, the unwavering audacity. But then they don't believe it. Someone teaches on tithing and says, I assure you, if you don't tithe, you will do this. This person, ask him in all sincerity. You see, we are not in the Old Testament. Otherwise, many men of God would have been humbled by now. Many of us. I'm not just saying them. You know now, God's grace is everybody can do everything. Whether you are tithing or not, who will know? It's just you and God. But can I tell you something? A day will come, the fruit of the tree will show. Are you listening to me? Many believers, many of us don't pray. You don't pray. The only time you really have to pray is when you come for koinonia. So when you are praying, you just feel that spirit you felt last week. Bah, 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 bah. And you are feeling guilty as you are praying. You know that you have neglected your secret place. Some of us rub our Bibles on our bed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. I declare safe journey to koinonia. And then you are leaving. It's not a priority. It's not a priority. It only happen if they say, all right, in uh, maybe... Uh, protocol or worship or any department you are the one who will lead prayers then you fast and pray and believe that all heavens are open only just to perform that religious ritual and then you leave but can i tell you something you can deceive man but in the realm of the spirit there is no deceit a lot of people say you cannot deceive god you cannot even deceive demons you see because in the realm of the spirit everything lays there i hope you know that you can deceive men in this realm but i tell you the truth in the realm of the spirit everything lays there ask the sons of skiva Paul was doing certain things and one day the Bible says the eternal concern. They carried somebody, sons of Stephen, plenty of them. And they came and they quietly locked the door. They said, we assure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Is that not the real Jesus? And the demon says, today 
is today. You will know that we have been watching you. He said, Jesus, I know. In other words, I see them in the secret. We know that they are living by the principles of God's word. And so we can attest. See, if you don't, if you don't run away from God in the secret, he will not disappoint you in the open. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. He said, but who are you? He said, since you want to pretend, it's time for the whole community to know that this anointing is fake. And the Bible says, that spirit beat all of them, one, stripped off their clothes, two, and drove them out for the whole city to see. So imagine the men of God in that city naked. What happened? Not accident, not bomb blast, no nothing. He said, victim of a... <laughs> you just imagine miracle service. And then just imagine all of us running. Me and Bishop stand. I said, let's stand in unity. What happened? Oh, but that's what happened. That's what the Bible says happened. Do you, do you think those guys will be the same? They'll just run away from that environment. I'm going to say, what minute these things? I thought it was so easy. When you see a man who is living by the word, doing some things, you think it's so easy and cheap. And then you come with the absence of God's presence and you try to do the same thing and you receive a root shock in your life. Be ye doers. Be ye doers. Are you a doer of the word? Are you truly practicing the principles that you know? Or do you just say, oh, I know, I know, at least I, I know, God knows. Are you a practitioner of the word? Hallelujah. There are many men of God who teach about giving. They are as stingy as anything. They don't give anybody anything. Anything. If ever they give, it's from what they gave them. You don't need faith to do that one. It came as a gift. And then you give it. Hallelujah. This is very important. Are you a practitioner of God's word? We teach on character. We teach on the anointing. We teach on certain principles. There have been so many messages that have come from this ground. I told you that some years ago, God asked me to do something. That's a customized dealing between me and the Holy Spirit. For one week, I was reading, chewing, devouring any book and any tape I find. Whether it's relevant to me or not, I just wanted to grow. Studying the Bible. Reading chapters upon chapters, books upon books in a day. And then one time the Lord told me for the next one week, I shouldn't open my Bible. I went back to those notebooks that I had been jotting. And the Lord told me if I were practicing up to 10% of the things that were there, my life would have changed. And I was ashamed of myself because I know God cannot lie. Many of you are holding the solutions to your life and destiny in these books that you keep bringing week after week. You do not respect what you wrote with your own hands. You cried on the day you were writing it. Somebody even gave you a handkerchief and you clean and you quickly wrote it. But you are not living by it. You cried that day and said you will live. They said make commitments and before they said anything, you were the first to go down on your knees. But after that, you see that's why, honestly, honestly, I'm not carried away when people just kneel down or lie down or roll. I'm not saying don't do that. But there's too much emotion in the church. Too much emotion. And we men of God are consoled whenever there are emotions because we feel, ah, the people are really getting it. The power of God is flowing. Not necessarily so. If I sing a very nice song now, whether the name of Jesus is there or not, some of you will start crying. You are just emotional. It will just remind you of maybe one, your children's choir song, something, and you just start crying. It doesn't mean you are being changed. It's just simple memory of the past. Very few believers. See, every time I pray to God, I lie down and I say, Lord, help me. I cannot boast that I'm practicing every single part of the word, but help me. This must be your attitude. It's not just the truth you know. It's not just what you've had. What are you doing about it? There are many of you that give koinonia messages to your friends and your family members. Powerful messages that can get them out of their predicaments. They collected it, put it in their laptops. They've not listened to it. Some of you have all the koinonia messages, including last week's one. How many have you listened to? There are people who are always collecting messages. Collecting everything. Do you have this? Abba, Jerry, Savelle, I have this. You see sections. And there's nothing that is being changed in their life. Nothing. Not their character. Not any result. The reason, hear me, very simple but profound, is that many of us are listeners, but we are not practitioners. Hallelujah. I remember somewhere in just they were doing orientation for Jerusalem pilgrims. Those who are going to go to Jerusalem. And you know they have some time of just encouragement and for some Bible studies. After teaching them about the significance of visiting the Holy Land and the impact it should create, they were giving them warnings and they said no drinking. 
And one old man was just looking at them while they were talking. He didn't say anything. He was just looking at them. And later when it was time for people to come in, just say anything, AOB, the guy said, well, this is my own issue. I won't go and buy beer in the Holy Land. But if I see it, I won't let it spoil. You see that? Now, do you think that person will ever walk in the fullness of what God has destined? No. That's how some of us are. I won't buy a cigarette, for instance. But if someone offers me, even God knows. I won't go and look for any lady. But whoever makes a mistake of coming to my house, even God knows that it's not with my leg I used and went. See, and it's amazing how people make these confessions and they, they are happy. People smile and then they feel very fulfilled. Let me tell you something. If you are not a practitioner of the word, you will be frustrated twice. Let me tell you the first frustration. The first frustration is because you have endured too much. Secondly, only to find out that your endurance is in vain because you were deceiving yourself. You see that? So, someone who was not practicing the principles of God, who had been looking at you and been prophesying your doom, in the future it will truly happen because you have been deceiving yourself. The Bible says, be ye. It says, do not just be hearers, but doers. Be doers, not just here as deceiving yourself. How many of us here have been deceiving ourselves? Tonight, God is really examining us. How many of us? For me, there are very few of us that truly put the teachings we receive to work. That's why there are very few people that have results. But God wants everyone to work in the manifestation of the word of God in your life. That with time, something should begin to show. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For instance, there may be some of us that still have all kinds of godless and useless music, videos, and different things in our phones. You are born again. Hallelujah. And all those pornographic jargons are still on your phone. Thanks to Blackberry. You can print your destiny left and right from one person to the other. Receive things you should not receive. And then Facebook again. These things are nice if you use them well. Twitter. We have all kinds of media... Um, outlets that help people not to live by the principles of the word so you have a man of god who loves god he's preaching the gospel but still has in one secret place in his folder passworded all kinds of pornographic jargons and the problem is they will never admit they need help you see the point it's a different thing if you're struggling with a challenge and you admit and say lord somebody help me but why people just laugh and then they come out and do all kinds of things and then you sit down and they wonder why God is not bringing members to their church. God is not bringing increase. They wonder why. And then they begin to criticize others that have this result. They say, forget about them, Jared. They must be putting their hands somewhere. Let me tell you something. Hear me and hear me very well. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Men may not know, but God knows those who are his. Hallelujah. Practitioners of the word. I listened to a message by Johnson Suleiman, a minister's conference that broke me in a very serious way. We'll be playing it for our, our Bible students. Very powerful. And this guy began to speak about, not, I'm not saying this to criticize. Many men of God, bishops, popular people you know in this country who deal on drugs. That's how they make their money. Millionaire clubs of pastors, apostles, prophets, bishops. Hallelujah. Currently, it was told that in NDLEA, drug law, there are about 230-something pastors that are under police custody for drugs. Some of them are your pastors. Who is deceiving who? Hallelujah. Johnson Suleiman said he went to South Africa. When he went to South Africa, they asked him, they said, Kai, it's very cold, though. Do you need a warmer? The guy said, no, the AC is okay. We can adjust. He said, no, we are not we need a warmer. He said, what do you mean a warmer? Say, lady, now after the burden of standing to minister, Bible says, and when Abraham's wife died, they brought a lady called Keturah. So to have somebody who will come and comfort you. And he looked at the man and said, what is all this? He said, the pastors in Nigeria do it. He showed some permanent ladies that belong to many of the men of God you see and celebrate. They caught a bishop at customs office with his bishop this thing. You know their shoes are customized. They opened the shoe and saw kilograms of cocaine and in the bishop's staff, kilograms of cocaine. Are you listening to me? And a pastor who was called 100 Bibles, 100 Bibles in each of them, they were wraps of cocaine. Nigerians, people who stand and lift up their hands and wonder why God honors some people and turns away from some people. Tonight is a message to re examine ourselves 
are you interested in practicing God's word at all cost? Joseph Suleiman said he was on his way going with his books and they stopped him. He said they stopped him. And they said, please, we know you are a great man, but we will probe you. When they finished, the customs officer called him and said, are you embarrassed? I'm sorry. But right now, the situation with Nigerian pastors requires that we check a lot of things. You find out how many preachers have married abroad and have wives and children that nobody knows. Whenever the woman says, ah, it's out, or just gets more money from building project or whatever and just try and say, you said, keep quiet. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standard show. Are you a practitioner of God's word? Hallelujah. He said he was in a hotel and a lady came. Just knocked and said, you have a parcel from the receptionist. As soon as he opened the door, that was how she just tricked herself. He said he was almost tempted to sleep with her. This is a sincere man of God. Because we live in a world full of men of God who exalt themselves and try to pretend all kinds of garbages while they are dying in the secret. The Bible says, he who conceals his sin shall not be delivered. He shall not prosper. Hallelujah. He said he didn't know when he turned and started shouting in tongues. That was the only help he could get. Shut up, shut up, shut up. The lady just closed the door. And his protocol will receive him in Nigeria, the great man. Whereas you have no identity in the realm of the spirit. Don't be surprised when they tell you there are pastors going to hell. Hallelujah. Say, God, how much of the word of God do you believe and are living? He said, one of his sons in the ministry, you went to preach for him in Lagos. Within one year, when he started, when he saw the crowd. As a spiritual man, he said he called him after the meeting and the son gave him a brand new Bible students. Don't worry, you watch the video. It's a minister's conference, won't give people around, but we will watch it. Hallelujah. Gave him a brand new car to Jeep. Most men of God, are you not surprised that with the evil happening, most of the people who should talk are not saying anything? They are just keeping quiet. Come on now. Je Jesus said, The one who dipped his hand with me in this pot is the one who is not innocent. When you have dipped your hand with somebody, will you bite the finger that is feeding you? Hallelujah. It's sad, but I must tell you this. It's sad. I did a little study, and I'm glad he said it, about the concept. Please, I'm not criticizing any pastor or anything. Please, don't send me any text messages telling me jargons. Hallelujah. But the guy who ordained the bishops, his name is El Pok, and he was the one who ordained the Dahosa, ordained, and you know, many of the men of God we know today. Are you listening to me? And that guy, was living in a lot of as at the time he was living in a lot of sexual perversion this is the reason why most of the bishops and the great men of god they find themselves lost and materialism are two things they cannot explain see that's why the bible said lay hands suddenly on no man so that you will not be partakers of their sins you just see one great bishop just got up my ah, he's gay now you try you and you are now thinking I always pray to God and say, Lord, as I stand to minister to your people, let me not transfer a faulty spirit. Once you see a whole congregation of people manifesting certain widespread characteristics, the leaders are not to be spared. I, I tell you the truth. The leaders are not to be spared. Hallelujah. I told you about my encounter in worry. When a lady came to knock my door by 1 p.m. Hallelujah. What she wore, it was too short. Where's my waist? This is it. See, this watch, this watch she wore. And then it had, a, it had a zip. Yes, she lifted it. I mean, she was proud. When I opened the door, ah! she said, Sorry, I'm looking for the, the, the uh, receptionist in this place. I didn't know what to say. I said, Are you not seeing my room number? I mean, guys, yeah, here in the night, quietly. Who will know? She said, I should come and help her go and walk a guy for my room. Come on now. When I jammed that door and I locked it, I will leave Zari and come to worry, kill my destiny and come back. See, when these things happen, that is when you will know whether you love God or not. That's why the Bible says for you to prepare. He said if your strength fails you in the day of battle, your strength is small. If you turn aside in the day of battle, there are too many people who are pretending like they are living the reality of God's word. Back to that story about that his son. And he saw the increase. After he gave him the khakis, he said, hold on. Apostle Joseph Suleiman and his wife called him and he said, please talk to us. I'm seeing increase in my own ministry, but not like this. 
this does not carry the signature of God. What are you doing? The guy said, well, you know, the blessings of God are some of the, princip- the principles that a daddy like you have thought of. He said, no. He told him, go out. He called his wife. He said, madam, you know that I see. Talk to me. And she began to tell him. There is a popular herbalist in this country. I won't mention names of things. He said he took the woman there and they told him that they should bring a six-year-old child together with a customized mic, just like my own here, that nobody else will hold. Listen to me. And when that sacrifice was made, they said anywhere around Lagos, if your ears can hear that mic, whether your leg likes it or not, it will enter that church and sit down there. So ministry is expanding. And many sons just come, Papa, receiving demons and spirits. And now he got a seed of a jeep and he gave him. John Suleiman said he said, even those who backslided did not go to the devil. They just fell short of God's grace. Is it that bad? And he went, he said, from today, I delete your number from my phone. I have nothing to do with you again. Do you know how many men of God go for meetings and they go with ridiculous PAs that nobody can explain? Let me see one pretty lady. Honey, come. So I'm going, I'm going to wait now, Mina. And I just drop. I tell them, please, book two rooms or one large room. Anyone can serve. Two or one large room. And then I say, she's my PA. Hallelujah. And when you see the seriousness in my life, you won't even believe think I'm seeing every lady like tricks. This is an example. Oh. Media. It's an example. Hallelujah. And then what happens? In the name of PA and useless, stupid, satanic manifestations of lack of self-control. What happens? So they have different people in different spots. Just sleep with that sharp sharp and then they just clap for the man comes to sit down he stands up and you see people falling under the anointing he's genuinely anointed but he has lost the presence see Samson woke up from sleeping with a prostitute did you read that in your bible what did he do immediately the bible didn't say he prayed to God immediately he got up removed the gate of his city because they said they wanted to enter and kill him so he said let me remove the gate for you he removed the gate and kept it on a mountain that you are compromising on kingdom things and God is merciful it's not an endorsement. Are you listening to me? This is what a lot of people don't know. May God deliver us from a life of falsehood and bring us into a point where we truly practice the word of God. There are many men of God who stand on stage and say, I don't owe God one night and God says, you owe me three years. Three years, we're a liar. They're shouting, I don't owe God anyone. It's not true. It's not true. They don't believe in giving. They don't give. They just have the way of getting money. They can cook up any ridiculous project that nobody can account for. And you know, the way men of God run ministry, especially, I'm telling you, especially those who are not transparent, they run it in such a way that nobody can question them. These are prophetic instructions. These are this and that. So you, sister, please, after Cornelia, let me see you in my room. It's a prophetic instruction. What nonsense is that? Who is deceiving who? Then when she comes, say, you say, don't you smile, Abba. Is that not what some of your lecturers